this is Christy Esch. I am the Director of Marketing at Perk. Thank you so much for taking some time out today to join our webinar. Uh, we have Mohammed Yassin, he's the EVP of Marketing at Perk. And then we also have Karen Gladney and she is the co-founder of Power Pro Leasing. And you'll learn a little bit more about here in a second. I wanted to give you a little bit of background, um, just um, some rules. If you um, have any questions, there's a chat feature. Feel free to ask any questions at any time. They will try to address those throughout the conversation. Um, and then also at the end, we will have a Q&A session. So let's get started. Thank you, Christy. Appreciate that. Um, appreciate all of you guys coming. I know that this is a interesting time of the month for, you know, many of us. Uh, beginning of the month, we're all probably wrapping up uh, kind of end of month reports, trying to get our, our ducks in a row for the month of June, um, and, and wrapping up some of the things we maybe weren't able to get to at the end of a very short uh, week last week. So thank you for spending time with us. Really appreciate that. We've got about an hour um, scheduled today, um, but we may run a little bit short here and try to give you some time back so you can get back to your spreadsheets. Um, but we'll have a, you know, a solid conversation. Uh, like Christy mentioned, if you want to chat along the way, feel free, just down right down there at the bottom, you got the chat button, chat away. We encourage conversation along the way. I'll be keeping an eye on that as we talk. Um, and if we feel like there's anything that maybe needs to be pulled into the immediate conversation, we'll do that. If not, we'll wait and we'll We'll uh, pull those questions and or chat comments into the Q&A on the back end portion of it. So I'd like to welcome uh, Karen. Appreciate it. Uh, we just met yesterday. So exciting. Hey! Um, she's got the, the absolute best, uh, best Zoom virtual background I have seen yet in, in, in quarantine. So <laughs> uh, why don't you take a second just to introduce yourself and uh, who you are, background, and what PowerPro does. And we'll get started. Yes, perfect. Hey, I am Karen, one of the founders for PowerPro. Uh, I come from the leasing floor, like 25 years in the industry, and just have a huge, huge passion for the on-site teams and everything that they shoulder, um, especially on the fourth of the month, <laughs> um, mm -hmm. as well as for the home offices and just delivering that amazing experience. PowerPro has um, now been around for nine years and our whole mission is to elevate the leasing experience. And when you think of leasing experience, really that, that touring portion, um, we're not the CRM or the lead management system, we're the touring experience, whether that's self tour, virtual tour, Zoom touring or VIP guided tours, which is really our, our foundation and just really uh, helping put the tools in the team's hands to make any of those experiences exceptional. That's awesome. You just touched on a lot of the different tour types we've been chatting about over the last month <laughs> and a half or so of having these sessions, right? Um, you know, we came into um, a time maybe around March, March-ish, right, where many of us have maybe been playing around with the options of maybe a virtual tour. We, most people had done some sort of pre-recorded video, but maybe hadn't expanded it out fully. Um, and then we suddenly realized we needed a full suite of all those available as the primary versus in-person being the primary. Um, and one of the things that's continued to come up in, in some of the, the chats um, and post questions has been around the idea of self-guided tours. And we're going to chat quite a bit about that today, which I'm really, really excited about um, uh, as kind of a follow-up. Um, so Christy chatted with you a little bit beforehand, and she mentioned to me something that really popped out to me that I'd love to explore to get started. She mentioned that you recently visited a hundred different properties in a hundred days. That's a lot of visits. A lot of visits. I'm really curious about what you learned generally um, overall about the state of what was happening at those those properties and then also specifically from around self-guided touring. Uh, what type of adoption have you seen around there? I assume this was before quarantine, right? So clearly a lot changed. Um, right. but what were you seeing and what was the adoption at that point? Yeah, it's so interesting. So first of all, it was a big endeavor to set out on a big adventure, um, but it was across the country and, and very helpful just to gain that 
perspective again. You know, when when we're on site, we're always taught to go and shop our competition so that we understand what our comps are doing, but also so we understand what our prospects are experiencing when they go and visit all five or six of us in one submarket in a day or more for that matter. And so I wanted to revisit how our prospects were feeling and the experience that they were getting. Um, the thing that surprised me, and I focused on all A plus new construction lease ups uh, because they're usually our trendsetters and, and whatnot. And while there were a lot of cool things out there, one of the things that it reminded me of is um, our basics that are not rocket science. Um, and mm. somebody even heard me talking about it and they were like, oh, this was such a good reminder of our basics. And yes, it is, but if we were doing our basics right, those wouldn't be the things that stand out. So all the controllable factors, like just being kind and, and greeting people, that doesn't take any technology to smile. Right. <laughs> so a lot of the stuff that's super free were the things that surprised me the most as far as um, the experience and, and where our opportunities are, which are exciting for properties that are a B property or a C property that doesn't have the budget. You know, you always think, oh, if only I could do what the A properties do. Um, and that comes, that even comes into play with self tour. You know, I think a lot of properties think, oh, we're not, we're not able to do that because we don't mm. have all the bells and whistles. And, and that's not, that's not the case either. None of, none of the communities that I visited offered a self tour. Um, Interesting. <laughs> they should have. Some did have the option already um, available, which I I mean, self-tour has been around since the 80s or before, you know, right. we've always had it, toss somebody a set of keys. So when I say available, I mean the technology behind it even. 46% of the time, <laughs> I had to wait or um, was sent away. So just think if a team oh, had wow. incorporated, yeah, delivering me a self-tour experience, how I could have been been um, taken care of uh, in that moment. So uh, there's, I could talk, I could talk the whole hour about, the, about just uh, that. That, that adventure, <laughs> about that journey. So <laughs> anyway. But, no, that's yes. amazing. That's amazing. I'm actually going to, uh, we had a couple of polls along the way. So I'm curious about the, uh, the folks that are um, listening along as well. Christy, can you pop the per first poll question up? Um, this one's around self-guided tours and do you currently offer them? Right. Um, this is interesting that you mentioned that as you were going through that many of them were not offering or didn't have it at least maybe a uh, organized system around doing a self guided tour. Um, I mean, you're right. This is not a this is not a new concept. I'm pretty sure the first apartment I uh, rented, you know, right out of college was a toss me the keys type of thing. Go see it. Come back. Um, and I could see a little bit of the concern in their eyes of, you know, this 20 some year old kid and what are they going to do in my unit while they're there? <laughs> Um, but it worked out and, you know, I definitely felt, uh, you know, felt the sense, uh, of comfort going through that unit without having maybe that salesperson right there alongside me. And in an instance like this is a definitely a great solution for folks that are trying to get in visual, like physically view a unit, um, but maybe still want to maintain some sort of social distancing in current circumstances, depending on what's happening in their, their areas. Um, right. so that's, sure. that's, that's great. Um, so we see a lot of this shift towards self-guided when we did, we did a, a chat um, a couple weeks ago uh, that talked about that. And looks like we just got the results and looks like 80% of the people are actually currently offering it. We only have actually one response uh, that says no at this point. So it seems like maybe that shifted a little bit since, uh, since your uh, experience out there in the field. I don't know. They may have been offering them. They just didn't offer them to me. <laughs> <laughs> So as, as we see that shift towards uh, self-guided as a result of some of these like shelter in place guidelines, um, we're also hearing a lot that consumer behavior is shifting a bit as well. Uh, like they're looking for alternatives to in-person tours, maybe long-term, right? We hear a lot about this idea of the new normal, right? Um, the fact that we are not going to return to what things were in February probably ever again, and certainly not maybe inside of this year, right? People are going to want to come in, but they're also still going to want those virtual options there. Um, why do you think that is outside of the obvious health, you know, uh, con concerns? Um, and why do you think we're seeing these shopping behaviors shift in some of these 
future trends showing that people are going to continue wanting these these self-guided or, or non-in-person options? I don't personally believe it's, it's a shift. I think it's always been there. It's just whether or not it's been provided. And we've, oh. always, looked down, we've always looked down on it, right? As an industry, look, I come from the leasing floor. I knew my magic was what I was like, oh yes, I got this person, you know, because they were buying me and they still are. They're buying the experience that we create. And part of that experience is delivering options. You know, um, when we yeah. first started down the path of offering options in our Tour Your Way campaign um, nine months ago, they, um, uh, the studies were showing back then, 95% of consumers want to um, have some time alone while they're um, going through their buying decision. That's not new because of COVID. And then 90% want to speak to a human being at some point during that buying right. decision. Well, how do you blend those? You don't operate them in two different silos. Um, and think about yourself with any anything we you go through in a, in a buying decision. And I think the reason that it's also not just a fad is the same thing that's happening to other industries right now. Our consumer mm. expectations are based off of what we experience other places. So now all of a sudden our um, restaurants and um, specifically I'll, I'll mention so tomorrow, right? Donut, uh, National Donut Day. Oh so yeah. <laughs> Right? So excuse to eat some donuts. Our team was looking for delivering donuts. And we have a donut shop here in Denver. That's where we're based. That's a specialty donut shop. And so we were going to have them deliver. And one of our other team members said, oh, no, you, you have to go there. They don't, they don't do any online ordering. And they only accept cash. <laughs> and we were oh. all like, uh, you should check. <laughs> and for sure, they have changed their system. They now accept credit cards. They now accept online um, ordering. Uh, Disney offering those those experiences to um, go on the, the virtual rides. Now we still want to go to Disney in person <laughs> um, and that sure. VIP guided tours aren't going away. It's just that now when our leasing teams are getting that phone call from prospects, they're saying, do you offer self-guided tours? That's one of, you know, whether you know, eight months ago, it might have been, do you have any availability? <laughs> because that's what was at the top of mind. And that was what was right. relevant. But, um, you know, teams have been solving for self guided experiences uh, forever. It's just that now we have tech, not more technology to support it, right? And to support a really strong self guided experience and be intentional and be purposeful. And right. it's, what has happened with COVID has just accelerated operators saying, hey, let's get a plan in place. Um, and then yes, I believe it will stay, or at least the people who keep it will be ahead of the curve with, against their competition because they're operating yeah. options. 100% agree. You hear that over and over. I get really excited things. about it. <laughs> no, it's great. It's great. These are, I mean, we hear over and over, these are, these are all the things that are succeeding right now, right? are things that we likely should have been doing before, right? And maybe didn't put the resources into. And one of the great things about, you know, this pause of sorts is that it's really allowed all of us to focus in and say what's really important that we really need to be doing um, and bring a lot of clarity to that and, and flushed away some of the extra things uh, that maybe weren't as, as, as good of use of our time or as good of use of our prospects time and of, of servicing those prospects. Let's double down on the technology piece that you just mentioned and about the idea of investing in technology um, around self-guided, right? Because I think we have maybe a mix of people who were doing it ad hoc and maybe didn't have tools. There's also a lot of people who have purchased tools over the past 60 to 90 days, um, but maybe did it a little bit of, in a rush and need to back up a little bit and look at it strategically. Um, from the starting point, as you're going out and saying, I need to look at vendors to determine and make some considerations about what I should be looking at to select someone to help me with self-guided tours. Where do you start? What are you looking for? Uh, before you go to vendors, um, start internally. And this is whether you're doing self-guided or VIP guided for that matter. Um, mm. And map out what your vision is for that ultimate, ultimate touring experience, right? From the time your um, prospect pulls up to future resident parking, or even before, some of, there's some touch points that can happen beforehand. Um, but then what are, what's the experience like? 
um, uh, that you want to have happen. We train our teams, our onsite teams, with a lot of, um, you know, make sure you ask uh, d those discovery questions, which is super important, but also where do you want them to ask certain discovery questions? And, sure. and not because they're a robot, but because it's best to sit out in the social space if, if that's your philosophy and, and have no barrier. Uh, but then mm. based on whatever vision you map out for this self-tour experience, maybe it's a self-tour welcome table, um, whatever that is, then plug in, where do we need um, solutions, right? Where do we need technology to support this? Um, and, and so first start with the, the vision map and maybe even phases, right? From, from sure. a technology perspective, we always talk about that minimum viable product, right? You don't, yes. <laughs> right? <laughs> you don't yep. release Turk's ver version one isn't the ultimate, you're gonna iterate on it. And that's the same thing. Um, and that gives our teams grace too, to know, hey, um, let's implement this. This is our vision. And then let's iterate, let's enhance as we go along, as we get feedback, as we go through it. But um, then when you're talking to your vendors, make sure they're actually giving you a demo and not mm. a slideshow. I think that's important <laughs> to see the actual technology and what, do you like them? I, I, I mean, wow. It, it just, at the heart of all this, it's a people business. I mean, I'm sure for, for y'all, for Christy and for you and um, Kylie, do you enjoy um, the people you're interacting with and do they enjoy working with you? Because the best, experiences and collaborations are going to come out of um, a partnership where people enjoy talking to each other and enjoy absolutely right if you just implement something and um walk away from it because it's there that's not good and also and i i'm biased here but be careful at least be aware of people who try to be everything to everyone um typically the jack of all trades right is is a master of none um, and, and really focus on the, the companies that have chosen their area and where they want to be and then um, are, are willing to um, engage with others, but not just doing something because it's the topic of the day, because they're not right. going to continue to invest in it long term. Absolutely, absolutely. So what I'm hearing you say is really start with internally, what do you want that experience to be, mapping that out. Um, and using that as kind of a litmus test as you go through and look at folks, while at the same time saying, is this someone that I trust being in the trenches with, right? Someone yeah. that I know is going to be I... a, a good teammate, right? Yep. You know, we were talking about that just before we got on that idea of like really being a good teammate to someone and knowing I can, I can work with this person uh, and they're going to help me achieve my goals. Yes. Yes. That's huge. That's huge. That is huge. Um, so another, another thing that a topic that continues to come up as, as people continue to add more and more tools, right, um, into their tech stack at a property level and even a, you know, a management a group or management company level, um, there are a lot of tools that have to start talking to each other, right? I know even myself as a marketer, um, you know, I took a look at my tech stack last, uh, into last year and realized that the number of places we were having to log into or having to get in the pull out and get into spreadsheets to kind of collate data was getting in the way of actually performing our job and being successful as professionals. Um, as we continue to kind of face some of these integration challenges, how can the operators kind of really help ensure that products play nice with each other um, and during that selection process, right? And you know, a lot of that's also on us, of course, right? We have to take responsibility for that. But as you're pushing your vendors to to go down that route, what should you be looking for? What should, what is it okay to you know expect, and how do you bring that conversation up? Well, first bring it up, <laughs> always. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> don't just assume that something can't be done. Um, always bring it up, and operators, um, you have the control. I, I, yeah, there's some vendors. I guess that would, would push back against you. But if you want something done, if you want um, two, two uh, teammates 
to play nice in the, uh, along the offensive line there and work in unison, you tell them to do so. <laughs> and, um, and we will, and, and you'll very quickly find out too, which, which vendors are willing to do that. And if, if you're truly going to be able to build a best in class stack, then you're going to need um, your vendors to um, uh, play nice together, open up um, integrations where possible. I do feel like that word gets thrown around uh, mm -hmm. very easily. And um, there's integrations, there's um, working alongside nicely because of how uh, another, um, a, another vendor might um, integrate with another system. Um, which that's fine too. It's just let's map it all out so that right. so that we all know what the expectation is. Because sometimes, to your point, Mom, you don't you might not need to create another integration. You might already have the natural workflow there, and that's that's good and that's okay too. Absolutely. Um, but but I do believe the control is in the operator's hands and and um, making sure to understand all that's involved. Sometimes there's more involved. And it's a heavier level of effort, right, than other things. But again, just always ask. Absolutely. If we if we narrow this down to specifically self-guided tours, right, inside of this integration piece, maybe pieces of data that we should be looking at wanting to pass back and forth, right, um, from our self-guided touring solutions into whatever other systems we may be using, your IR PMSs, our CRMs, what, whatever we may be using, maybe even our, our ad advertising um, tech stacks. What what pieces of information should we maybe be prioritizing from a, from a integration yeah. perspective when we approach those vendors? Well, I think y'all have nailed it, <laughs> and I'm not trying to brown nose right here, but Perk, with your multi-channel scheduling tool, you um, came into the market and, and responded to that need of option, right? And again, that's what we're trying to solve for here is options and letting our prospects choose what type of touring experience they want at each phase in, in their sales journey mm -hmm. and um, you have that <laughs> you're you you have that built in and um, what's been nice is is watching our property management systems um, implement those uh, activity or contact types as well into their platforms and I think just all of us working together to continue that touring type and figuring that out because it's also got a map back to reporting and I would just ask operators to be patient with everyone's um with everyone because uh you know if it's the property management systems they're still trying to work out okay well is it a, is it a, a visit and then a, mm. a self tour at, um and or is it and does it count against this person's closing ratio or house and where does that mag back to in our traffic tracking so um just all of us knowing there's it's it's a it's a bit of a web but it can be tracked and figured out we just um have to all work together for that implementation sure. and on a vendor side right we're trying to map to every property management system um in a unified way but um i honestly think with these options what you're doing at perk with the touring type um is one of the the key components um for tracking it um, going forward and allowing the option to be very visible um, for our okay. end users. So kind of making sure you have consolidated tour options in one place on the front end, but then also that those tour types are very cleanly right. going into our systems on the back end from a tracking perspective for closing and ROI and that sort of thing. That makes a That'd lot of sense. Cool. It's not there That'd, today. Right? <laughs> everybody's, everybody's headed there, which is awesome. And, and, um, let's just let's just keep going it, it's needed and, and we're headed there agreed agreed Let, let's let's take a little bit of a shift because we've, we've spent a little bit of time up here right talking about just the general idea of self-guided um mapping out the strategy and what that journey looks like for our prospects and then actually maybe making some selections around um around technologies and then getting those technologies to speak to each other play well in the sandbox if you will um but then we've got to get this out actually rolled out, right? Actually to the teams that are on site and have to take these self-guided tours, um, which could be a little bit different doing that at scale for some of these, uh, some of these uh, areas. Um, what type of things should we be looking at or uh, best practices 
from an enablement perspective for those leasing teams to really succeed at doing that well. When, to your point, um, you know, many individuals, whether it's a leasing agent or even in other industries, a lot of that is the experience of you, you spend decades building up that personal one-on-one -on -one body language, eye contact, tone of voice, exactly how to get that person to read them and, and work through that, uh, that experience with them. And that's kind of taken away from you a little bit. How do you re-enable uh, that team to, to feel like they're going to be successful with a self-guided tour? Yeah, I know last fall, a lot of people had questions like, oh my gosh, do our, our teams um, thinking they're going to lose their, their jobs, right? At, at Optech, the, the um, seminar I went to, that was one of the big questions. And just rem communication, reminding teams that as far as to set them up for success, reminding them, one, that you need them, <laughs> um, because we do. And there's so many ways that they're involved uh, because VIP guided experiences are going to come back as well. So mm -hmm. if they haven't already in some locations. So just making sure too that 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 vision map that the home office mapped out with with the help of people from team members from on site right. um, is communicated first and everybody's going to be different. Every management company is going to be different and how they want to um, uh, deliver this um, from a little bit of contact to completely no contact, um, but there's there's always way to ways to bring personality into that. Um, I I our 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 team wrote up eleven best practices uh, that we share that have irregardless of whether or not you were to use Power Pro or not. Just trying to think mm -hmm. through um, different ways to um, enhance a self touring experience. One of them. Like, and it's funny because I think back to the days of setting up my mini models and, you know, you'd cut out <laughs> the shape of a cloud or something and, and it would say um, 19 feet of hanging space and you would put that on a hanger in the closet. But those, those pieces are helpful. Our team isn't walking through these apartment homes with our prospects. So what can we do with some point of sale type signs that are fun that we should have been doing anyway? They, they shouldn't have gone away. But oh, wow. hey, you know, let's let's bring them back and and in whatever personality um, that property wants. Some might want a very clean, modern looking plaque that says it. Others might want the cloud shape cut out. But mm -hmm. that's something. Um, possibly having a self tour welcome um, table that has PPE on it. What we're hearing from teams is that prospects are remembering their masks but um, the gloves are not being remembered. So having those in a little cellophane bag that maybe is sitting out front that's sanitized mm. um, or depend, you know, we've got, there's high rises, there's mid rises, there's garden levels. So the, the arrival experience is different at all of those. Also take a step back. All of us <laughs> have been able to get from the check-in desk at a hotel to our rooms for years upon years. How have we done that? Well, one of the right. ways we've done that is with um, signage. So take a fresh walk through your property and just make sure your signage is as strong as it can be everywhere. So those are those oh, wow. are a few of the tips as far as that implementation. Signage in general is a, a, a great idea. It's not something you necessarily have to worry about, yeah. especially on that journey from maybe the key pickup to the unit right? Being able to actually navigate there uh, isn't something we really had to worry about when we're going in person, actually walking someone there for sure. Um, well, I like that idea. From the time people drive into your community, I think I have a tick with signage around that. <laughs> that is super important as well, just coming off of that main uh, thoroughfare from any of your entrances, um, looking at that just to get people to the leasing Absolutely. Offices. Absolutely. I like that idea of e even inside the closets of you know, yes. uh, closet space, that sort of thing. We had uh, Jamin from, from uh, TMG was on a couple of weeks ago and he mentioned also some of their self-guided tours, some of the signage that they were doing, stocking the fridge, inviting people yeah. to eat snacks, that sort of thing, right? Just making an experience where they can come in and really sit down and feel like maybe they're at home, right? Yeah. Um, and really settle in where they're having that, that, that time in there. But that next step of going into maybe some of the specific amenities and walking through the same way maybe you would many times right. verbally, 
uh, and just doing that via, you know, small uh, plaques of signage and personalizing is a good idea as well. I like that. The idea of maybe, maybe my property's personality is I want yeah. the cloud shape cut out with the handwriting, right? Or maybe it's a property that really feels like it wants a really nice plaque with the words on it instead. I like that. Uh, I like that uh, a lot there. Um, as, as people are going into some of these self-guided tours, what are some of the commonly overlooked things that you see people potentially missing outside of, you mentioned signage. I think that's a really big one. Um, we can kind of maybe lean on some of those tips that you, that you mentioned. What are some things that are easy to forget that maybe we should be, be keeping front for, forefront in our minds? Uh, you know, I feel badly, I keep coming back to it, but a plan. <laughs> um, just <laughs> having that plan communicated. We've, We've all been, uh, and involving your, your vendors too in that plan, whoever's involved in leaning on them um, to make sure that they're supporting your teams and your home office through it all, um, because you deserve that and they deserve that. That was one of the hardest things, um, or one of the things I'm sensitive most is to being on site and, um, you know, while the people who built it or the people who've been involved in implementing it, um, they know it because they've been entrenched in it. But when you deliver that message, just making sure you keep it simple, right? Uh, so that is, um, that's super important in delivering that plan. The things that I, I see getting overlooked are honestly, it, it takes me back to just the leasing, like the greeting. How, mm. How does it start? And, um, and what is my communication like from the time of being online? And making sure, here's the piece, here's the piece. Make sure that every team member acts like a prospect, puts their mm. self in the prospect's shoes. And, you know, in the case where they have perk, that they are go online and they <laughs> go to the perk scheduling tool, right? Muhammad and they mm -hmm. actually choose and select and then let that cycle through and then um, uh, have another team member deliver the, the touring experience, um, however right. that may be from the rest of it, um, no matter what self-touring experience is being delivered. And then um, and have everyone play every role. It's so, so key. And that's with any new feature that gets released, sure. like all of us should always practice with it because when you know, then you're able to tee it up for your prospects too. Like, oh, wonderful. As you're walking to um, the uh, apartment home 121, you're going to pass by our pool. And even though our amenities aren't open to tour, <laughs> you'll see um, the sparkling water, whatever it is, like uh, help um, uh, plan that expectation and map that out with, with your teams. Plan, plan, plan. I'm hearing that as a, as a, as a theme right. from you, and I love it. I'm no, so I sorry. love it. I love it. That's also one of those things, though, that is worth doubling down on, right? And really reminding because it can be very easy when you're moving so fast and when you're trying to adjust and pivot. It can be easy to forget to take some time and just sit and plan for a moment. Um, slow down to speed up, right? Um, it can be really easy to forget that. You, you mentioned something a minute ago that I want to kind of pull back around to uh, for a second around um, the beginning or the, the general groupings of self-guided and the idea of where on the spectrum are you between no contact, a little bit of contact. What are, can you talk to me a little bit more about that? What does that look like? I, and I'll be honest, I, I, uh, and this is probably just because of the experience that I had, you know, when I had got my first apartment had the experience of walking in, someone greeted me, and then they basically put some keys on the table and I picked them up and went and I came back. But, you know, it's not exactly like that, uh, maybe now. What are maybe some of the, like, two or three common formats, maybe for doing a self-guided tour right now? Yeah, I think the one you experienced is, is um, one that we've seen and heard from teams. I mean, our teams have had to be resourceful, and that's what's so dang awesome about on-site teams. When we're put, when we're pushed to the brink, we're going to figure it out. We need leases, right. and that's what pays our paycheck. So we are going to figure <laughs> out how to give somebody an experience. I, it, you know, um, and I and I think that's what's so special too. So uh, 
and I've heard from some operators at different conferences too, um, even going back to, like I said, Optech, that shared that experience, just like what you did and had a lot of success with it, um, with, their, with the team providing the keys or a fob, um, because they just hadn't updated their smart locks yet. And right. um, be careful, don't just go out and buy a lock. There is lock management. There are lock management systems and that you need in place. <laughs> it's not as For simple sure. as going out <laughs> buying a lock, but um, uh, you know, all the way from that spectrum, which is easy to implement, right? Mohammed, low tech, um, somebody goes in and greets somebody, uh, hands them a key and tell, kind of points them where, where to head, uh, so to speak to um, the other end of the spectrum, which would be no contact with the leasing team at all. Mm. Uh, and they are able to um, do that, create that experience all separated from the team um, and show up without seeing the team, uh, unlock the doors without seeing the team um, and leave without seeing the team. So those um that's and then then in between i would say the third one lies on the on a gradient in between those two and it just sure. depends what level of technology you want to or you want to and can implement so you know maybe um you don't have your locks in place yet but you have a system where you're delivering um some sort of technology platform and experience which um, or, or maybe you have locks in place and the, the, some of the lock management systems have a, um, a pared down way to get your prospect mm. to the apartment. So you, don't, you haven't yet layered in the full um, branded experience part of it yet. Um, so, you know, somewhere, somewhere in there is, is probably the one that's most common just because uh, it's, it's it's the easiest to implement or, or where you experience the, the thing is just being purposeful and thoughtful from a mm -hmm. property management standpoint when you do put the plan in place and also give grace to your teams and, and kudos to your teams for having been resourceful, even if there's things you would change from maybe what they started to implement. They're just 100%. Trying. On that, uh, I'm just writing down, I'm writing down be purposeful and resourceful because I think that's a great reminder uh, for all of us and for myself as well. Um, on that, the far end of that spectrum of completely no contact with the on-site team, right? They were online, they basically scheduled the self-guided, they maybe went somewhere where they were able to pick up a key on their own, went inside, did the tour, came back, dropped it off. Um, as a on-site team, how do you close that loop? Because at some point you've got to speak to someone to get this thing closed, right? Like how do you, how do you what's the best practices for follow up on that type of situation? Um, well, I believe as you believe that it's you're going to get more um, conversions if there is the human um, element layered in, which is how Power Pro set up is to right. uh, very intentionally layer in the human um, component uh, so that there is some sort of connection and, and knowledge that there's somebody there to answer questions. But no, you don't actually have to. And it, it is possible in our industry um, to, for in the scenario you mapped out, that they could go online. They could get home and go online and at least online and, and never talk to somebody um, if they wanted. And that's, there are people out there that would do that, even, even with it being yeah. their home. Um, maybe they, they don't end up having any questions um, that are more granular that they want somebody. So they can do that. That our, our right. industry has the technology to accomplish that. To your question of follow-up, and I believe follow-up takes place even before our prospects arrive, right? Because we, and we will go back to a place where we allow our future residents to come in without an appointment and make a decision at that point. You know, they've walked in from um, Whole Foods and said, right. <laughs> oh, hey, I'd love to take a look at an apartment. And we offer them that choice of a VIP guided or a self-guided experience. Um, but right now, as people are setting those appointments, you know, making sure to send them a what to expect email, 
um, so that mm. they know what the experience is going to be. That's that's ahead of time. Telling them that the team is there. There's there are people that are there that can answer questions. And then on the flip side, when somebody's left, every system out there has different ways to report back um, about that that prospect having been there. Um, mm -hmm. Your team does know that somebody's been there. It's not happening in such a sure. way that we don't know. So even something as simple and authentic as asking them, um, like we would if we were in person, oh my gosh, I saw you see, I saw 121 and 128, which one did you like the best? Uh, I'd love to a help answer any additional questions or which one would you like to um, lease? There's, there's, again, mapping out what that, that follow-up touch program looks like. And maybe sure. it's something that you implement within your pre-programmed CRMs for that. Um, I would say- it's Actually awesome. integration point, right? Yes. <laughs> right, right. So, um, but, but do it. I, I mean, all of us, I, I'll hear operators all the time say, oh, I'm not a salesperson. We're all salespeople. We're, we are <laughs> all, it, and just being your authentic self, some people are gonna buy you and some people aren't, right? Um, whether Absolutely. that's being your friend or um, not, not, um, and you're making choices too uh, every day. And operators are trying to earn the business of um, owners. If they're a fee management company, um, if they're an ownership group, they're trying to earn um, the trust of a bank to get the next investment for another property, right? Or a, a group of investors. So we're all selling and, and, um, uh, follow-up matters in all of those instances because you remain relevant and you remain top of mind. And that mm. is an important thing. So asking those prospects, those future residents to come join your next resident event. Well, I get that those aren't happening necessarily. Or your well, next there's Zoom. some virtual ones, Zoom. right? Maybe yeah, a virtual exactly. bingo, right? Yes, your Zoom, <laughs> next, join your next Zoom virtual event. So they, they get a feel for the, the community. Um, there are opportunities to invite people to engage and, and just be sure you do that, even though you didn't meet them. I didn't get to meet you in person, but um, wanted to check in on you and uh, see which one you liked most. How did you like the experience of touring on your own? You, you mm -hmm. know, be able to get feedback that way too. I'm That's hearing really the ABCs again, right? It's the ABCs yeah. and what you would do if you actually spoke with someone, right? But maybe just tweaking that a little bit, trying to automate a little, some pieces of it if you can, or getting yourself some templates that you can easily deploy. Right. Um, and maybe it's a, maybe it's email or maybe it's a phone call follow-up to ask some of those follow-up questions or set up next steps um, right. if they're needed. And maybe you ask and they say, I'm good. I'm about to do the application online and I'm, I'm we're good. Um, but at least you went out there and asked and you started building that rapport with someone who hopefully will be around for a long time. Yes. Well, and remember that that initial experience is also played into their decision to renew. Everything, everything adds up and is sending a marketing message, your world, sure. uh, or our perception of that uh, brand or community. 100%. Let's uh let let's go back up a little bit from the on-site team to maybe property managers, regional managers, right? And talk a little bit about about metrics and that sort of thing. And, and before we get started, and I ask this question. I'm gonna have Christy pop up. Uh, if you can pop up question number three um, around the uh, conversion, right? So let me give her a second to get that one queued up there. Um, so if you do offer self-guided tours, and we'll leave this one up for a second so uh, folks can get, get, get in there. Um, if you're offering self-guided tours, what percentage would you say are actually turning into leases? So Karen, yep. as we've been chatting through with people around all the different types of leasing, or not leasing, but touring options that are being spun up, uh, one of the things that we're consistently seeing is um, this trend that when someone is taking that extra step, especially digitally and saying, hey, I wanna do a virtual tour, I wanna do a um, FaceTime tour, or I wanna, you know, I'm gonna actually leave my home and I'm gonna come, because there's, there's an ease thing too about leaving your home, whether it's now or later, right? We're starting to get used to the idea that we can do a lot of things in our living room, right? <laughs> if someone's gonna come, and spend the time 
to do that self-guided tour, what types of general, I'm not looking for like a, you know, exact conversion numbers, that sort of thing, but in general, what types of um, movement are you kind of seeing in, in, uh, in, in conversion, in metrics or general behavior around that? Well, right now, since the only type of tour anybody's offering is uh, either a virtual or self-guided, that number's probably hundred <laughs> percent because if you're getting leases, you're getting them through those avenues. One hundred percent. Prior to all this, I, you know, I think the or not, I think the feedback I got was that some of the conversion um, ratios were a little bit lower, but I do think that all leads back to again having a plan. You don't right. just make sure and get things in place to measure it, uh, just like you would with a, a marketing ad. If you're not seeing it work just perfectly right away, look at how to tweak or enhance that ad um, online or wherever before just say, oh, we're not going to do that because these options are going to lead to more conversions. Anytime you give a consumer um, power in the process, um, you are going to develop a connection. You said it with your um, experience. We were on a call, a training call this morning, and one of the um, managers said that her son had just gone out looking for an apartment and had chosen a building that allowed him to self-tour. Now, part mm. of that was because the other buildings weren't allowing him to tour at all. Um, so his ability to be in that home and uh, measure and, and really feel the home without um, a team member around is, is helpful. Right. I mean, I think about feedback tours I did and you think about operational efficiencies you could gain if even you just baby stepped into this and allowed people who were VBACs or had already leased and hadn't moved in yet and your team member didn't have to be in the home with them um, while they measured uh, each uh, corner. Uh, that that's nice, but you are going to see higher returns by offering options. It's just a fact. And then how Absolutely. you create those, make capitalize on those options and enhance them is is important. As long as you're following those ABCs, right? Both in the pre prep, <laughs> both in the pre prep, and also in the follow up, right? right? Awesome. That that's key, regardless of what you're doing from a from a touring perspective, I think. Um, so I just got the I just gotten a, a side message there just with the poll results from Chris. We had a couple uh, come in and, and and do that, and it looks like we're basically the consensus is that fifty percent of the people are turning into leases, right? So one out of every two is saying, "Yep, I'm gonna I'm gonna do this," right? And I can only imagine, you know, in an environment right now where people are getting better and better about getting that plan, getting that process, getting that training, getting that follow up in place, you know how far we can go from, you know, from there. So that, that's, that's amazing. Um, so we're about to, we're going to kind of get around the back end here and maybe give people maybe 10 minutes back in their day, which would be, be great. I think for a, for a Thursday, the fourth, right. Um, as you see, uh, or actually let's, let's go back looking into the future. All right. So we're starting to go we into the scenario now. <laughs> Yes, yes. Uh, at least we, we pretend like it sometimes, right? Um, so we know things are starting to change now. We're seeing a lot of uh, states or counties slowly starting to open up or just flat out opening up, right? And saying, all right, we're back to business. Um, we're seeing some that are slowly stepping things in, maybe with some restrictions, maybe even county on the county level uh, basis. Um, but I think we can all, we, we all have that feeling that maybe you're August-ish time frame, we're going to start seeing things kind of settle down into some sort of uh, format. Going forward, um, through the end of the year, going into 2021, um, what do you think some of those big, like, kind of leasing concerns are going to be kind of really from a consumer perspective? What are they, we touched a little bit on this earlier, what are they going to be looking for um, as we move forward and really start settling into our, our processes? It's time to start thinking about 2021, right? It's, it's weird to say that. But it is time to start thinking about what we're going to do in planning 2021. What do we need to be thinking about from a consumer behavior perspective? Um, well, before even saying 2021, just because, I, I mean, uh, two two months ago, things were entirely different than they are today. So, so true. So all of us remembering how quickly things can change. and um, But also being sensitive to the fact that through what 
we are in right now, beyond just everybody liking options, there everybody has different levels of comfort with what is going on. Um, I went to my first in-person meeting the other day and was offered oh, wow. with no no qualms. They offered a handshake, and if you're on, I love your I love your uh, engagement. A handshake and a hug. <laughs> it was like woo. <laughs> um, <laughs> And I had another same day, or no, not same day, next day, another uh, meeting, if you will, with a, a client. And it was uh, in the, a physical space. I'm not a fan of the social distance word because I don't think we're socially distancing. We're just physically distancing. We're still Agreed. being kind, gracious, Agreed. and thoughtful. But he was like, and I'm a hugger. I'm a hugger. I knew. I was not. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, same I'm really, here. I've reprogrammed. But, he goes, he, he knows me as a hugger. So he's like, no hugs, no touching. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody's on a different place in their own spectrum and their comfort level. And we need to be sensitive to that. Um, as long as, as long as people are sensitive to it, um, which nobody knows how that, how long that's going to be. Everybody's different on there. I mean, we all know of Howling Mandel. He's always been like that, right? From what wow, I know. Yes. Yeah, sure. so, <laughs> Anyway, just just making sure that you're sensitive to the options and and continuing to provide those as we go through um, 2020, and then, um, gosh, just just hopefully, let's just all pray that 2021 provides some um, some more balance and and uh, levity for all of us, and and maybe a, a walk back into um, just uh, remembering how great. Uh, it is all these gifts that we do have and and getting to go to a sporting event is uh, such I'm really ready for football season. So Concerts, that's what I comes to wait. mind. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, you, you know, I just think being prepared and and our industry has done an incredible job of responding, responding quickly, taking care of our residents, um, you know, give your on-site teams a virtual hug. I'm sure you all are, but as much as you can, because they are they are dealing with that impact of an angry resident that has, mm. you know, isolation, uh, emotional issues going on behind the scenes and takes out on yes. our teams and all that. So I just don't think that's going to go away tomorrow. I think I'm continuing to appreciate our teams um, through 2021 and and be thoughtful about the systems you do implement and what how they help solve for after um, 2020 as well so that you're not having hopefully to plug something in now only to um, uh, replace it by something else later uh, hopefully your best in class stack that you're um, along the path to building is is going to um, have a plan for uh supporting life after covid as well for sure for sure i i don't know that i could have thought of a better a better spot to end just with the the last couple of things that i've written down from you which is be purposeful be resourceful be kind be thoughtful right and remember the yes. gifts that we do have available to us because even though it has been a challenging time there have been a lot of amazing things that have come out of it um, not only from, you know, us on our side, uh, you know, running properties and those sorts of things, but also for the, for the people that are out there searching for new homes, a lot of great things have really come, which will, uh, you know, set them up for success, you know, on a, on a, in the long term. So thank you. Thank you so much for, um, spending time with me today. I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, we're both awesome. talking. You're a delight. <laughs> thank you. Hopefully one day we get to meet in person, um, and for everyone that, uh, <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, we'll do it. Um, for everyone that joined, just to you know, to, to to follow along, I appreciate you once again. Good luck with all your end of month uh, reports and wrapping everything up as you as you uh, tackle the month of June. Um, as a follow up, we will have uh, not only kind of the recording from this, uh, but also some of the meeting notes. Christy's going to put together some meeting notes, just summarizing some of the conversation here, the poll questions, and what that came of that. Uh, and then also the 11 tips for self-guided that Karen mentioned earlier. We're going to go ahead and throw that in there as a resource as well. So you can kind of go out and check that out. Take a look at it last night. Super helpful. Really appreciate you and your team putting that together. Um, and we'll try to put some other things along with that as well. Uh, that should be out. 
Uh, possibly tomorrow, um, but at the very latest, you'll get that on Monday morning uh, in your inboxes and feel free to you know, consume and share uh, that as possible. Um, if you have any other questions for either one of us, feel free to reach out you know, and chat. We'll try to make sure that, that information's in that email as well so you can reply back to us. And if there's anything you'd like to hear uh, in one of these sessions in the future, whether it be a one-on-one -on -one interview like we did here today or, um, or a panel session like we did a few weeks ago, uh, definitely shoot that over as well. We're always looking for some great ideas. We have a few folks still lined up, um, but we're always looking for some great ideas, especially as things are rapidly changing going into the month of June and July right now. So thank you very much. Have a great day and have an amazing, uh, amazing June. Thanks, Karen. Thanks. Bye. Bye. High five. <laughs>